know I'm always telling you that you are what you eat. Well, that's why we're delving into this with Esther Logue from Paleo Ridge for a two-part series on exactly why you are what you eat. I'm Anna Webb. Welcome to A Dog's Life. Esther Logue, welcome back to A Dog's Life. Hi, Anna. Thanks so much for having me back. No, gosh, it's great. I can't wait to catch up on your news. Yes. So, Esther, yeah, what is going on at the moment at Paleo Ridge at the HQ? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Paleo Ridge HQ, we've always got a lot going on, uh, but there's been one thing that's been the main focus recently, uh, which is um, rebranding our Paleo Plus packaging. Um, it's been something we've been working on uh, for about the last six months, I would say, Um just to update it and basically give the Paleo Plus range a, a kind of revamp and to remind everybody what the Paleo Plus range is there for. Yes. Now, you know, at Paleo, you know, I just love the range, as you know, because of the choice, really, and the, the huge flexibility that it offers to tailor your dog's diet to individual life stages, individual dogs. You know, your dog might have an injury and need surgery and post-surgery. There are options to really boost your dog's immune system, indeed with Paleo Plus, but also potentially by mixing some DIY options into the classic range, which ha that's been my big thing that I've really enjoyed doing. But it is that life stage thing would you say and paleo plus really offers if you like for a senior dog to get extra nutrition out of a bowl of food definitely yeah i mean it's it's important i mean as we know you know dogs uh have such a varied need for different things you know dogs with um health conditions puppies seniors there's just the the range is, is so wide um, for their needs so that's why we have the different ranges um, you know the essentials the classic the paleo plus and the DIY to try and cater as best as possible for all of those um, what the paleo plus aims to do is you know with the added superfood mix in there it aims to kind of hopefully direct at all of these groups <laughs> you know the seniors the puppies um, post-surgery anyone really needing uh, an immune boost and the reason uh, we have the superfood mix in there is to try and make it as nutritious as possible. And the other factor we've included in the Paleo Plus range as well is the, the wide range of different cuts of meats we use. Yes, and I'm particularly interested in that because over the years, you know, I've read lots of articles. <laughs> and one of them that fascinated me was a piece. It was in Dogs Naturally magazine and it was highlighting how kidney disease could be balanced by feeding a little bit of extra kidney in your dog's diet. So, you know, in a way, treating like with like, which is something that good old Hippocrates, who championed the whole treating like with like, which, of course, is the basis of how homeopathy works. Definitely. Yeah. The whole like for like thing. I mean, that goes back, uh, you know, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of years um, you know, with uh, homeopaths uh, always testing that theory. Um, but it, it has been proven as well. There's various different papers and, like you said, different articles about organotherapy um, for dogs, which is, you know, if your dog's got a, a faulty liver or something, then you should probably increase the amount of liver they're having in their diet because there's specific enzymes and, and, and factors within those organ meats that can actually help you know, the living organ meats, <laughs> um, so to say. So, yeah, treating like for like um, is, is is very true. And why we like to include uh, a varied amount of different organs in our Paleo Plus range. I mean, for instance, you know, in our lamb and mint products, uh, we include liver, lung, kidney and spleen in there. So that's quite a diverse range. But you see, in a way, in, in the wild, if you think of dogs, you know, I mean... <laughs> I know I shouldn't mention Gremlin. I tend to mention him all the time at the moment. Yeah. But having seen a cat eat a whole rabbit, 
that he <laughs> caught, you know, himself. You know, the rabbit was almost as big as he was. I couldn't believe it, but he actually, I'm sure I've mentioned this to you before, at a whole rabbit apart from one back leg. Um, wow. I couldn't believe it. And, you know, I was so shocked and it was before everyone was filming things. It was the era of the uh, smartphone, but I just I just couldn't believe it. I was, you know, and I thought, Anna, don't panic. Let him do it. He's a cat. You believe in raw food feeding. He eats raw anyway. If he wants to eat this rabbit, think leopard. But you see, he ate all of it. <laughs> yeah, apart from one back <laughs> leg. I, this honestly, I swear, happened. That it 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 just really you know I found it so interesting. Basically, we know that adding some fur, you know, rabbit fur or whatever, onto some chews, which has become another popular trend at the moment, can actually help to be a natural dewormer. So it kind of you see nature working in real life. And you think, gosh, it kind of all makes sense. But you see, if if that is the, the philosophy behind it all, then in a way, Paleo Plus offers arguably the nearest thing to a dog eating in the wild. Definitely. Yeah. And I think, you know, with what you were saying, where the, you know, seeing Gremlin eat an entire rabbit must oh, be no. quite a sight. <laughs> oh, honestly, um, I couldn't believe it. Particularly, you know, I mean, he had the head. Wow. I yeah, know. That's, I'm not sure that's something I would want to see. But also, you know, from a nutritional point of view, fascinating as well. You know, the fact that, um, you know, I suppose it's like with humans as well. You know, p back in the day, our ancestors would, would eat an entire, you know, if they would hunt and kill an animal, none of that would go to waste. Everything would be consumed. Um, yeah, and, and then they'd use the skin, you know, for their fashion outfits. Exactly. So there would there would be absolutely no waste. Whereas, you know, nowadays we, we're very picky with what we um, with what we eat. Um, and a lot of the things we eat aren't very nutritious. And it's the same with dogs as well. A lot of the food out there, you know, is processed and synthetic and it's not actually doing much good. So, yeah, the Paleo Plus range is, you know, it has been designed using scientific research to include um, as much variety as possible to try and cater uh, for all the needs of the dog. Yes, absolutely. Now, I know that um, the Paleo Plus includes the very good product that uh, Paleo offers, which does feature as part of your DIY range and in your supplements section as well. It's a product I've I've loved actually for years as it's just delicious, pure minerals and vitamins and packed with vitamin C, because correct me if I'm wrong, it's a combination of blackberries, blueberries and kale. Yes. Yeah. And not only that, it's got broccoli organic hemp seed powder, uh, seaweed and green lipped mussel. <laughs> so it's a real, um, a real potent mix of uh, antioxidant superfoods. Um, so the Berry Good, I mean, the reason that we created the Berry Good product, so just the superfood mix by itself is so it can be added to the classic range, or if you do DIY feeding, then you can include it in there as well. So all the Paleo Plus range includes that anyway, but then you've got the You've got it as a supplement because it is so good. Um, you know, if your dog needs that extra nutritional boost, you know, adding a, a table a teaspoon of that in to each meal is uh, is ideal. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of green lip muscle, actually, as lots of people listening, you know, will know. For me, it's well, I will say I do feel it is the best <laughs> anti-inflammatory to use, you know, to balance arthritis and stiffness in not just senior dogs, but to use green lip muscle preventatively. Similarly, you know, because 90% of all cats apparently get severe arthritis, needless to say, these will be cats eating overly processed options. But just to sort of ward all of that off with Gremlin, from the get-go, he'd have a capsule of green lip muscle mixed in with the DIY cat food I made for him because back 13 years ago, there weren't actually any specific raw brands focusing on cats. And now we're seeing a lot more brands coming on board, actually, to offer cats the opportunity 
you know, to eat raw, which which is great. And Gremlin didn't have any arthritis. <laughs> wow. That just goes to show, doesn't it? I mean, as a as a preventative as well, that's I think that's another thing, you know, with these sorts of ingredients that's really important is anything that's like antioxidant and highly nutritious like that, it will be a preventative. Um, you know, the more that we can prevent these uh, health issues and diseases, then the less chance of having to, you know, go to the vet and be on medication and have operations. You know, ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. And and by the sounds of it, you know, uh, with the gremlin, uh, not having any arthritis at the age that he was at as well is, is quite amazing because I know that's really, it's probably one of the most common conditions for cats nowadays. Yes, that and uh, kidney disease. Yeah. yeah. Mind you, having said that, one in 10 dogs, Esther, and I know you know this, do suffer from kidney disease in their lifetime, you know, which arguably is because of, I think it's still about 80% of all dogs in the UK are fed an overly processed diet that obviously is dry and contains no moisture which over time will put pressure on the kidneys, and which is why cats, most of them do die of kidney disease, which um, is, is very sad. Again, Gremlin's kidneys were absolutely um, spick and span. You know, he had a whole body ultrasound and the vet was actually quite amazed that a 13-year-old cat had no bladder inflammation and his kidneys were absolutely pure there were, there wasn't any inflammation at all showing or any disease on the ultrasound proving to me that his diet did keep him in good nick and only we all know it was his curiosity that killed him at old adage you know curiosity killed the cat it wasn't yeah. down to any illness at all which is part of the big frustration of it all really and and pain but that said at least you know i know that he past not being in any pain or discomfort or or having anything wrong with him really you know but moving on it it does work similarly with dogs and of course kidney disease one in ten you know and the other thing Esther is which I find shocking that 50 percent of dogs in Britain are diagnosed with a cancer around the age of 10. Wow I mean that's that's just horrible stats I know, really depressing, actually. I'm, t I'm yeah. loving the tone, actually. We're doing quite a serious podcast today. Normally, we, we're a bit lighter. We'll have to lighten up now. No, but it's, it's. I think it's good to be aware of these stats as well because it does highlight, you know, that there is a there is a big problem here. Um, and there has been a big problem for quite some time. And, you know, I know that people are people are waking up to the issue now. You know, it's, it's devastating for pet owners everywhere. Um, you know, to have to see their dog go through these horrible stages of, of cancer um, when it can be prevented. In the majority of cases, it can be prevented through diet. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's why, again, going back to very good, you know, I've seen Prudence eat blackberries. You know, I'm blessed where I live. There are a lot of blackberries in September, masses around, and she'll have a, a nibble and grab one off the bush and I let her do that. Similarly, with nibbling on, you know, long, fresh grass, the reasons dogs do that, there's so many ideas behind it. Uh, many people just think they do it because they can. And I go with that option. However, grass is actually packed with silicia. And of course, silicia, you know, you can use it. It's actually dimeticious earth, actually, but but going a bit complicated now. But silicia, when used homeopathically, it rids your body of things you don't want to be in there. So that old adage, when dogs might be feeling peaky, they nibble on grass. It kind of makes sense because of the, the huge silicia content in fresh, nice grass. Yeah, definitely. And that goes, you know, that goes to show as well about a, a dog's instincts. You know, if they're, if they're not feeling quite, quite well or something, they know where to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, which highlights that even even the modern dog, you know, and a lot of dogs have been you know, conditioned these days. But. Um, you know, they still have their instincts about them. They're very strong instincts, which uh, which is great. Um, but, you know, it's that that old classic thing. If you if you did a test and you put a bowl of fresh raw meat and then you put a, a bowl of kibble in front of a dog and let them go and choose, you know, 
where will they go? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is true, actually. You know, it's even the synthetic odor of kibble. The interesting thing, people say, well, Anna, you know, but oh, the raw, you know, I just worry it's going to smell. And then I say to people, have you ever put your head into a bag of kibble? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not not a nice smell at all. Well, it's overwhelming. Yeah. It, I mean, it's intoxicating, actually, is what it is. I mean, it's extremely unpleasant for a human nose. So can you imagine what that smells like to a dog? I mean, it doesn't bear <laughs> thinking about. It's almost death by odour. <laughs> Yeah, do you know what? I didn't actually think about that because I, you know, I find the smell horrible. But yeah, dogs obviously have much more sensitive uh, sense of smell, so it must be very overwhelming for them. Yeah, exactly. And whether it's appetising or not, I just, I really, you know, put that out to the jury. Really, that is an interesting thing. So that's something I, I say to people actually. You know, particularly, you know, Esther. You know, I know you're a fan of raw green tripe as I am, you know, I actually don't mind the smell. In fact, I don't even notice it. It's it's so strange. That's, um, I think a lot of people would disagree with you there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then I know that you're a big fan. Uh, you know, to be honest, at, at work, when we're when we're producing um, uh, meals with green tripe in it, the, the whole place, um, you know, you know, it's tripe day, let's just say. <laughs> when it's being produced um but I imagine you know if you're feeding it every day and you have done for you know 10 20 years then you do get used to it <laughs> I know I just worry when people come to visit you know because you do get conditioned to smells <laughs> don't you and I just assume that my flat can't possibly smell of dog or tripe or anything you know <laughs> and then you know I just I just do worry sometimes you know when the bank comes to fix the boiler or whatever you know what I mean I'm thinking <laughs> oh god I hope they don't think it's weird the the smells around here um because something you know I definitely will never do is use anything scented in this home you know we don't do scented candles we don't do any of these I don't know what we call them evaporating things that you plug in down to you know the huge worry of volatile organic compounds and mm. phylates that are released from anything that has a synthetic fragrance in it you can't get away from it and that's something again that's um another aspect really to overall health don't you agree Esther? Oh definitely I mean the the toxicity of these fragrance products is massive um and I've been learning a lot more about it recently I mean I used to love scented candles um and having them on um and I don't use them anymore I've never used air fresheners because of you know how toxic they are um, but also it's quite interesting because, um, you know, with I know dogs can produce their own uh, vitamin C, um, but, you know, vitamin C can't be stored in the body. Um, so, you know, you need uh, uh, to have you need to have it included in the diet to have it every day because toxins like, you know, air pollution um, and the toxins from scented candles and things like that can actually deplete uh, the vitamin C content in the body. Uh, when it's inhaled so it's really important to keep the vitamin c levels um up which is why you know feeding products that are high in vitamin c like blackberries and kale you know these sorts of superfoods is really important because they can actually help combat um uh the depletion of vitamin c in the body from all of these toxins yes yeah absolutely no it is it is really important i've always added fruits and veggies um to the dog's diets actually and there is a school of thought it does say that berries so like the blackberries blueberries they do help with pigmentation actually i have heard of this but i haven't like i'd be interested to hear more yeah i mean so with mr binks obviously you know he's black and tan and you know as the black and tan dogs age um and black dogs age they obviously show their age more than paler colored dogs and white dogs because their muscles go gray you know a white dog can look a lot younger at the age of 12 than say mr binks i mean he's doing okay his muzzle is a little bit gray but his eyebrows have started to go a little bit gray so that's why we've been upping the very good i've got to say it's interesting and whether it is just because it is that antioxidant boost 
to boost the body to deplete aging. You know, I think antioxidants do hold back the aging process. And of course, going gray and a bit like with humans, you know, I mean, we go gray, don't we? You know, it is a natural part of the aging process. So working to combat that in every way you can, I think is really important. You know, use a multifaceted nutritional approach from the get go. Definitely. Um, you know, antioxidants are, I, I don't think we kind of shout enough about how important antioxidants are, because where you've got oxi oxidative stress in the body, um, you know, wherever oxidative stress is, is inflammation and antioxidants, you know, it's important to have a, a, a daily intake of them to kind of combat any inflammation and oxidative stress, which, you know, happens, like you said, as we age, it just happens naturally. Um, so that's why, you know, especially for for senior dogs, you know, to include products um, like the Very Good uh, can be massively beneficial. Um, it's interesting about the pigment side of it, though. I, I, I had heard that before, but I've never really done much research into it. I know, absolutely. I think I think it's one of the herb firms. Not It's either Dorwest or Hilton Herbs, can't remember which one, that does a tincture that is a mix of herbs and dark fruits, which I did use a lot with Molly because Molly, uh, my first miniature bull terrier, was a very dark black brindle. And you know what? She never really, she never really lost her pigment. She really didn't actually. She went a bit grey around the muzzle, but she, you know, she was pretty good and dark. You know, I've seen some um, darker dogs as they age, they they really go grey all over, which I quite like in a way. It's very distinguished on the one hand. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if you can combat it, <laughs> all the better, really. I know my hairdresser's doing a good job of it at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, it's, it's definitely something to think about, you know, because you do see... Um, on occasion well I have seen on occasion you know dogs who who aren't even that old to be honest who ha have started to get the the kind of dry um discolored fur um which is quite sad to see uh, but that's a key sign you know of that your dog probably needs to have more antioxidants in its diet um yeah, well, it's, I mean well no I was just going to say but it's so it's skin isn't it you know the yeah. biggest organ in the body mm. um it shows the signs of aging obviously so much we 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 all know that um and it's no different for dogs and of course the the quality of their coat the thickness and the texture it reflects how well or not you know the skin is and then the skin is like a barometer for what's going on inside definitely yeah it's um yeah, I think the skin, yeah, like you said, you'll, you'll get the warning signs, you know, like I guess uh, when you get like a warning sign on your car that something's going wrong inside. <laughs> um, that's that's where the skin uh, usually kind of, you'll probably notice something. Same with humans as well. You know, if you suddenly get um, a bit of eczema uh, or something or you've got a bit of a rash, there's probably something going on inside your body that needs to be explored. And it's the same with dogs, you know. If they're getting dry, flaky skin, if their coat's looking a bit rough and um, not as kind of smooth and shiny as it should be, chances are there is something going on uh, deeper in the body. Um, but, you know, the majority of these things can be helped with, with a nutritious diet. And it is that. It is to work, I believe, from inside out. Yes, Prudence will have, you know, the odd bath, particularly when she's been naughty and rolled in, you know, fox poo, which, you know, she does. And she's so funny. She Over time, she's learnt that, that it means we're going straight home. <laughs> I remember somebody wanted to stroke her once. I said, I really don't recommend it. Can you see all of this fox poo all over her head? And they were like, ooh. You know, <laughs> she was absolutely covered. And, you know, and then she knows the drill. She knows it's so funny. You see, it's training, but really in repetition and positive reinforcement. And so she just offers herself to the bathroom. It's so funny. And she's good as gold, to be honest. It's an absolute quick, you know, she does it right. But my point being, too much shampooing and treatment from the outside isn't necessarily going to help balance any anomalies going on in the inside definitely yeah and I think you know straight away when we think of skin conditions we naturally assume oh what can I put on that to stop to stop it from you know itching or uh, looking red and sore 
Um, but ultimately, you know, with everything as well, well, the majority of things, it is coming back to, you know, there's something lacking in the diet there um, that's causing this this flare up of, of whatever the symptom is. And usually it can be that there's too much oxidative stress in the body, hence the antioxidants, um, hence needing more uh, kind of nutritious foods. So um, I think, you know, coming back to the, the paleo plus range, that's why we try and include so many different ingredients in there, you know, and it's all very well having, you know, if you have like, for instance, like a pork product, um, mm. you know, instead of just having one cut of meat in there, why not have five different types, you know, from the pig? Because each different cut of meat is going to have different, you know, benefits to it. It's going to have different levels of nutrients. Um, so that's kind of the angle we've we've gone with. And we've tried to reflect that on our brand new packaging as well. Yes. Um, <laughs> Gosh. Yes. Yeah, so explain kind of how the actually so I love advertising and marketing and how different concepts are illustrated visually. Definitely. So I think we were, you know, like we we do every now and then we review our ranges and, you know, we've got the classic range, which was our first the first range that we produced and we um, redesigned the packaging for that a couple of years ago, uh, which we absolutely love. And it looks very classy and British and it's and it's great. But then we were looking at the Paleo Plus and we were thinking, well, the Paleo Plus range is although the, you know, the packaging's great, um, it's not really shouting about the fact that it's this premium range with all of these benefits and all these additionals in it. So we've tried to highlight that with the new packaging, um, which I personally I think looks amazing. <laughs> it's to it's totally different to the old packaging. Um, it's darker, but it's got these images on it which show kind of what's in the product itself, um, including the different cuts of meat and including the superfoods as well. You see, I'm fascinated by this. You know, I'm just loving the idea that there's spleen in there. Yeah. You know, because I know because the spleen is so instrumental in balancing the immune system. Definitely. Yeah. Spleen is uh, I think the spleen out of all organs is probably the one that's maybe least talked about or known about, in fact. Um, but it has very important jobs in the body. <laughs> it really does, actually. And when when it's indicated that the spleen has got a problem, I think, you know, you've got a problem with your dog on a blood diagnostic, for example. Definitely. Yeah. And because the spleen is the, what do they call it? The the red blood cell graveyard <laughs> yes. I think is, is, is what they call it. So, you know, when you're, I think your red blood cells are, you know, they only last for around 90 days, don't they? And then, you know, when, once they've been used and done their job, then they go to the spleen where they're then processed um, and kind of nutrients extracted, things extracted from it. And then, you know, what's left is then excreted through the body. So, that in itself is a hugely important process. So if there's an issue there, um, that can cause huge problems. Yeah, yeah. And skewed blood readings. Yeah. 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 So interesting, isn't it? No, I love that. Equally with, with lungs as well, you know, because I know um, with your air-dried lamb lung treats, which are, you know, a huge hit here, as you know, <laughs> yeah. it's also quite a low-calorie option. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, the calories are um, very, very minimal. Uh, you know, with with lung especially, I mean, it's there's barely any fat content in there, um, which is great. So that makes it a healthy option. But again, you know, there have been studies around if if you have respiratory issues, um, issues with the lungs, that actually feeding lung can can be beneficial. This organotherapy thing rings quite true. It's so interesting, actually, you know, from a human perspective, you know, there may be some listeners listening who have, you know, mild symptoms of asthma, for example. Yeah. Can we get lung um, at a butcher's? I don't know. Uh, do you know what? I'm not actually, I'm not too sure if you can. I'm. That's a good question. Maybe that's something to look into. Um, yeah. But it's, it's not something you see. I mean, we used to sell um, at Paleo Ridge, we used to sell... Um, I'm pretty sure we used to sell lamb lungs as in whole, you know, frozen raw lamb lungs. Um, but we stopped doing them and I can't remember why. It might have been a sourcing issue. Um, but since then, I yeah, don't see anything about them apart from, you know, the dried lamb lung that we do. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, you know, different cuts of meat. It's so regional. I mean, you know, I always say, you know, in France, 
they're very they're very good at no waste you know I mean you know brains are a delicacy in France not that I ever ate any when I was there but and maybe <laughs> here's an idea maybe by eating brains you might get more intelligent <laughs> <laughs> who me specifically <laughs> <laughs> no, no but that's one that's, you know <laughs> one and all <laughs> no that's um I mean it's it could be I'm, I'm I'm sure that there's some research on that as well because if you think how how important the brain is and the the amount of nutrients that are probably in the brain as well I mean I don't know if there's like a, a an ethical side of whether people or dogs should be eating brain but I know dogs especially there are huge benefits for them but it, again it's not something that you see in this country especially very no well in France humans eat loads of them honestly it's oh, on do they? A, yeah no no it's on menus in posh restaurants oh wow oh no seriously and it they it comes like breadcrumbed up so it doesn't look like a brain obviously that you yeah. yeah honestly and it's um considered a delicacy so it is so interesting this <laughs> have you tried it before no I didn't go that far actually no. <laughs> I mean in France they eat tripe all the time that's yeah. another delicacy but it's bleached or mm. washed rather than you know it hasn't got the green in it which does contain I think the maximum amount of nutrition in the raw green tripe yeah yeah I think it's important to have it um I mean I know that uh I suppose by food standards ag agencies for humans, they have to bleach it because, you know, of the laws and and everything. But um, yeah, it's really, it's really not as nutritious as when it's green. No, exactly. Which kind of highlights in a way, even simple processing like that, which isn't overly processing, takes away a lot of the goodness. Definitely. Yeah. Which is why, you know, having... Uh, a clean raw um, food is it, it really is the best way to go um, you know as long as as long as you know that companies are using high quality high welfare ingredients um, which you know as you know that's what we stand by um, no additives and pre preservatives um, you know because there are a lot of additives in food these days which can cause a whole load of health problems um, even if they're labeled as natural you know preservatives or additives uh, a lot of the time they still come with health complications um so yes that's why it's really important to feed as natural as possible yeah and there is that worry you know and I understand it a bit you know say for example from a, a vegan's perspective that they could be worried that feeding their dog a bit of cow, for example, that some of the insecticides and pesticides that um, the cow will have eaten from the grass it's being fed will metabolize into the meat. And then that's then spread to their dog. Equally, medication that that cow might have been on, whether it's vaccines. I did a podcast with Dr. Jean Dodds, actually, and she was actually really worried about a whole new strain of vaccines being issued to farmers for their, their livestock based on the COVID vaccines using that technology. She said, Anna, my main way to avoid this is I am now a vegetarian. But I postulated to her, you know, all dogs, you know, really don't thrive. <laughs> Jean, as you know, being a vegetarian and certainly not being a vegan. So what's the answer then for dog owners if they understand their, their dog needs to eat a lot of meat? Yeah. Um, I mean, the the whole vaccine um, thing is, is quite interesting as well. But um, I mean, it's, it is very difficult because, um, you know, there are a lot of companies now, you know, whether it's for human meat or for dog food, um, you know, the mass production you know, the antibiotics, the vaccines, everything that's being given to these animals in order to rid them of bacteria is then having that knock-on effect to human health and dog health as well. Um, but the only thing that I can say about that is, you know, when you are sourcing uh, meat is to check for traceability, um, you know, where that meat is coming from, what farms it's coming from. Um, is it British meat or is it being imported? You know, all of these things can help, um, you know, with with you know especially for people who are vegan you know people who care about the environment and care about animal welfare 
um, checking traceability is is a thing. Feeding grass fed and organic where you can as well always helps. You know, if if meat has an organic status, there's only minimal amounts of chemicals that can be used in the products. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that is, it is important, and I think it's worth paying a little bit more, you know, for that to get the peace of mind. Well, Mr. Binks, that was our first part of our two-parter with Esther Logue on You Are What You Eat. What did you think? Yes, a lot of food for thought. And you're right, it is time for Woof of the Week. Don't underestimate the old adage, you are what you eat, and so is your dog. Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, go on, rate and review the show wherever you tune into your podcasts. Thanks again, of course, to Esther Logue for joining us today. And we can't wait to talk again next week. Thanks, of course, to Mike Hansen, my producer, for all the music and the production as ever. Find out more about him at Pod People UK. And for me, find out more about nutrition and training packages I offer at Anna Web Dogs. What's that, Mr. Binks? Yes, you're right. We will be back in your feed next Sunday. So go on, subscribe now so you catch part two with Esther Logue. Bye for now.